This is Twit. Where does data literacy come from? I mean, like I've thought about this in terms of like financial education as well, right? Like of all the things in our lives that are so incredibly important when you take a look at finance, we get very little education about that as kids growing up, going through school. Like unless that's a specialization that you want to take, uh, you don't really hit adulthood and have very good, well-formed uh, thought around that unless your parents, you know, bring you into that or you learn it from your family. Same would go for data, right? Where, where does that education come from, do you think? Okay. So I don't think it is the same. I think if you look at who were the people who got rich in society, let's go back to the high priests in Egypt. They forecasted, for instance, the floods of the Nile. Long time horizon, very noisy output. Because hey, if they didn't come that year, I mean, we all know that you know predictions can't be that good. Mm -hmm. To the Middle Ages, those quacksalber doctors, people who told you about bloodletting or about whatever happens after death. Long time horizon, also quite noisy. Also, the feedback loops weren't all that clear whether people really got what they were promised after death. Mm. And I think financial advisors fall exactly into the same position. Long feedback cycles and noisy outputs. Everyone knows you can't really predict what's going on. So just hang in with me. Sorry we had another bad year, Andreas. But, you know, I'm sure next will be much better for you. And, you know, here's, of course, to fix some of your assets which you pay to me for my services. So I think that model is a model which is pre-data, where people push whatever their boss tells them. Mm -hmm. But then there are companies now an example is Mike Shah's SIGFIG, standing for significant figures, where you give your username and password to your brokerage to that company, and now they log into your account and they check how your performance is. And they also log, of course, into the account of other SIGFIG customers. And what I love is that the transparency they can create now gives you a weapon to go to your financial advisor and say, hmm, are you aware that you did in the 20th percentile of the performance of last year when we take everybody else at your brokerage? Do you really think that you want me to pay you the full fee? So I love it when data is created and the authorities, or in this case, the financial institution, can't do anything but admit defeat. You know, I have a house in China and the air quality is not always very good. And it used to be that the Chinese government published the figures about the wonderful air quality. But in the cities where there were U.S. consulates, you know, somehow near the U.S. consulates, the air quality seemed much worse than the ones that the Chinese government published. And then some do-it-yourself kits came out and some technology similar what we have when you access the dark web using Tor, what we have here so they can't be tracked back. And it turned out that those kits all produced very similar measurements as the American propaganda did. And then suddenly the Chinese had to backpedal and somehow now the numbers pretty much agree between the Chinese government and the US government's number for the air pollution in China. So those are the things which I love, where you can't do anything, where you create data as you go along and then creating transparency, helping make people, first of all, being honest, and then secondly, helping people make better decisions. In this case, it might be, am I going out today or staying in because the air quality is so bad? Who who doesn't benefit in that scenario? Like who, who I, I mean, that, like you say, it, it, it requires someone to be very literate, data literate. They have to know that they have the ability to do that and that they have those tools to begin with. But who, I mean, the data illiterate, what, what happens? I happens? think everybody yeah. in China knows that PM 2.5 number. So you know how to interpret that number. Yeah. Like here we know how to interpret probability of rain, whether we take an umbrella or not. And that is just at the end. I think order of magnitude is another good question that many people don't know what's possible, what's plausible, what's implausible, or what's just simply impossible. Mm -hmm. So for me, data literacy 
allows people to do these back of the envelope calculations and then just figure out whether something they need to worry about or not.